Let's take a look at what this problem is asking. This is a question about a gannet, and it's a seabird, and it's a seabird that fishes by diving from a great height. And when they dive from a great height, what they're doing is they're just falling, and as it falls, it speeds up, and it speeds up because it's in free fall. And we're told that the gannet hits the water 32 meters per second. Okay, that's like greater than 65 miles per hour, so that is a great, great speed indeed. And we want to know what height it's dove from. That's what we're looking for here. Now, I'm expecting that to be a pretty big height because I've dropped things from a great height. And if I want something to be moving nearly 65 miles per hour when it hits the ground, i got to drop it from a pretty significant height. And so I'm expecting my number to be pretty large here, certainly larger than the height of the building that I teach in because I drop stuff off the roof all the time as part of teaching physics. And it, they don't get going nearly this fast by the ground. And the building that I teach in is probably about 15 meters high, so I want something significantly higher than that. So we have some idea what we expect the answer to look like. Now, let's go ahead and prepare. And we're going to prepare by drawing a pictorial representation. And I'm going to take the pictorial representation, and I'm also going to put my known values on it. So the gannet starts out here up in the air, okay? And I'll apologize for my artistic handiwork here. It's starting at an initial height of we don't know. In fact, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the height that it dives from. And it's starting with an initial speed of zero because it starts at rest, because we're told to assume that it's motionless before starting its dive. Then the gannet falls, the acceleration is directed downward, okay? The acceleration is downward, and we know the magnitude of the acceleration is 1g. So in fact, the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared directed downward. Okay, we know that that's true. Okay. And then at some time later, the gannet makes it to the surface of the ocean, and it's going to dive into the ocean at this great speed. And we're told that the speed that it hits at is 32 meters per second. The initial, or the, the, the position here, the final position, is zero meters. That's right at the surface of the water. So it drops from a height that we don't know to zero meters, speeds up from zero meters per second to 32 meters per second. From here to here, it's accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared downward, and so the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now this is a one-dimensional motion problem. We know the initial speed, we know the final speed, we know the initial position. Actually, we don't know the initial position. We're trying to find this. We know the final position. We also know the acceleration. The one fact that's missing from this whole description is time. Time does not appear in anything we're told or anything we're looking for. So we want to use a relationship that doesn't use time. And the basic relationship we'll just use is this. We use our basic kinematic relationship that says the final speed squared is equal to initial speed squared plus 2 times the acceleration in the y direction this time times the final position minus the initial position. And with that in hand, we're ready to solve the problem. And let's go ahead and rewrite our relationship here. Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2 times the y acceleration times the final y position minus the initial y position, okay? And we know these values. The initial speed is just 0 meters per second. The final speed is 32 meters per second. The acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. The final position is 0 meters. What we're looking for is the initial position. Now take a look at this relationship. We know everything in the relationship except for the initial position. And that's what we're trying to solve for. So we can put in numbers, we can rewrite the equation, and we can solve. And with a little bit of algebra, we come up with this. The initial position is 52 meters. And so the gannet starts out 52 meters above the water. Let's do a quick assessment. We said at the start 
that we expected the height to be quite a bit more than 15 meters because I drop things from 15 meters all the time and they don't get moving this fast. And so our, our result seems reasonable. This is 50 me 52 meters, so it's a bit more than 50 yards, half a football field. That's a pretty great height. And when something falls from that great a height, it's gonna be moving pretty quickly. And that's of great service to the gannet because it hits the water moving this fast and it's gonna go under the water a pretty good distance. So our final result is that the gannet drives from a great height it hits the water at a high speed, and our final result matches our understanding of the way the world works.